guest the guest are there can you unmute and talk please Okay. Yes. Hi. Good. Uh, Anurag is a trainer. He is going to take the session for you guys. Anurag, we can start the session. Okay. Sure. Uh, hi guys, my uh, this is Anurag. So I'll be your uh, uh, trainer for this journey on AWS training. Uh, let me brief you about myself first before we start. So uh, I have like uh, around 16 years of IT experience and about uh, seven years into the cloud, where I've been working with uh, almost all platforms that are available, uh, be it uh, AWS, Google, IBM Software. Uh, you know Azure, Microsoft. So primarily worked on all the platforms, and uh, you know you can be rest assured that you would be in safe hands for uh, going to, uh, going through this journey of AWS training. So uh, we have divided this training into uh, you know 15 sessions with two hours of sessions uh, uh, every day, and uh, we are concentrating more on. Uh, uh, you know the lab work so that we gives a complete hands-on because uh, the theoretical part is something that you can get anywhere and uh, you know uh, lab is one thing that uh, gives you hands-on experience and you would be able to perform in uh, you know practical and once you, uh, you are working with any organization you have complete hands-on on all the cloud services so I, I'll be sharing my screen uh, for today I'll be taking you through some uh, uh, basic concept that we would be looking at. Uh, I'll be taking you through, uh, you know, exam blueprint as to what is the expectations from AWS for this exam. So let me share my screen first. So guys, are you able to see my screen? Yes, yes. Right. Uh, so this is how we have designed this uh, course, uh, where uh, you know uh, this has been designed from inputs from various uh, of my uh, colleagues who are working as solution architects at various levels, and uh, you know this has been designed for any person who has uh, no matter what kind of experience he has. He, he could be a Windows guy, he could be a Linux guy, storage, networking. Uh, some experience is, uh, would give you an edge to understand the concepts. And this course has been updated till last reInvent 2015. Now Re reInvent is a conference wherein uh, that is held every year in Las Vegas uh, by AWS where they launched their new products, new services, uh, and this has been updated till 2015. So any service that was launched uh, till last year, uh, 2015, that is included in this course. And that is what the ask is for the exam uh, that is uh, coming up for 2016. For this year, reInvent is scheduled in November uh, in Las Vegas, 2016, and there would be coming up few more services that would be part of uh, exams that would be coming up next year in 2017. Okay, so uh, we have been talking a lot about cloud. Uh, you know, everybody is saying that uh, cloud is the future. Uh, cloud computing is something that uh, gives you a uh, you know more stable, a more uh, uh, you know uh, robust kind of career where you can uh, really grow. So while uh, there, there are a lot of platforms, uh, it could be IBM, Microsoft, it could be uh, Google. So why only AWS? So the reason we are here is, uh, uh, you know, uh, for learning AWS because of a lot of parameters. 
So if we look at AWS, it is the fastest growing platform in cloud space. Uh, this was launched in year 2006 and since then it has been going exponentially. If you look at the latest Gartner report uh, that, is, uh, that was released May 2016, Gartner has uh, you know, uh, reported AWS as undoubted leader uh, in cloud space for in the infrastructure as a service. So this is the fastest growing platform in cloud space. And if we talk in terms of capacity, uh, cloud ha uh, AWS cloud has uh, uh, you know 35 uh, availability zones and 24, uh, 24 regions across the globe with 52 edge locations. So if we talk about capacity, other cloud vendors are not even one tenth of what cloud uh, uh, you know AWS is providing. Then more and more organizations are resorting to cloud uh, just because uh, you know. If you go to any client, the very basic question or the very first question they would ask is, uh, how reliable AWS cloud is? How secure is my data? So security is one of the major thing that we have to look at. Right. So uh, cloud uh, AWS cloud provides uh, you know has gone and undergone a lot of uh, uh, assurance programs, a lot of uh, security parameters audits. That uh, you know, Gartner says AWS is the safest safest place where you can get your data on cloud. Then AWS certifications are very uh, uh, popular uh, in de uh, demand because of a lot of companies moving to AWS and a lot of uh, people are required to manage that infrastructure for the clients. And then with large uh, number of security assurance program, this is the safest place as per the Gartner, where you can have your uh, data moved into the cloud. Okay, now these are the uh, various certifications available with AWS. Uh, we, are, we are concentrating on AWS Solution Architect Associate level. This is the entry level uh, uh, you know, certification for AWS. Then we have Certified Developer Associate, Certified SysOff Administrator Associate. Developer concentrates more on, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, bringing in automation like uh, using Chef, Puppet and other automation tools uh, where you would get understanding of how every service is working in the background. SysOps administrator is more of a, uh, uh, you know, administration kind of a, a, a certification where you would be able to troubleshoot and manage the complete AWS infrastructure. The one that we are concentrating on, Solution Architect Associate, this is more of a designing and you would to, uh, be able to uh, design and implement uh, the solution for your clients once you are through with this course. Now these are three associate level courses. Uh, after this we have two professional level, AWS Architect Professional and DevOps Professional. AWS uh, Architect Professional is around giving you a more detailed and advanced knowledge so that you are able to understand clients environment and uh, come up with a solution that uh, suits their need. So this is a more detailed uh, architect level program where you would be able to design and implement solutions. DevOps professional is more of a uh, you know, uh, course where you would have for more insight into managing AWS environment both from uh, administration and uh, bringing in automation kind of stuff. So these are the five course available. All associate level are like uh, $150 each and uh, professional level is $300 US each. So coming to the various AWS services that we have uh, as of today, uh, you know, we would be digging into each and every services uh, that are available. And giving you, a, I'll give you an overview for all, all the services that are available as of today, so you have a complete understanding as to what AWS offers and what is the functionality of each and every service. We would dig more into the services that, that are more relevant for this exam. Uh, let's say EC2, S3, uh, you know, RDS, DynamoDB. So these are the services that are more relevant for this uh, exam. So we would be digging deep into these services, and we would be, pro, uh, you know. I'll be guiding you through all the labs that needs to be done so that you have a complete hands-on on all the services before you appear for the exam. 
Okay, uh, so we have been talking a lot about cloud computing. So what exactly is cloud computing? Uh, when we say cloud computing, it uh, you know the very first thing that comes to our mind is that uh, somebody is uh, looking after our infrastructure. That is correct. So if we have to define a cloud computing, it is a web service that uh, you know through this web service we are uh, provisioning our uh, infrastructure resources. Uh, into third party uh, infrastructure so that we are able to manage those resources through this web service. Now there are uh, different models to it. It, it could be uh, you know IES it, that is infrastructure as a service wherein uh, you are uh, just getting infrastructure from the vendor and you are uh, managing uh, anything above the operating system like uh, uh, you know uh, providing uh, uh, doing updates, uh, you know, installing your application, managing your application. This is what IES is. Then there's PaaS, platform as a service. That is more of like, a, you know, infrastructure that you give to your developers. And our developers are able to, uh, you know, uh, work using that infrastructure. So that would in, uh, involve, uh, apart from infrastructure, it will also involve, uh, you know, uh, the applications that would be involved. Sorry, I was on. Uh, I was speaking on mute. So, uh, uh, cloud computing is a web service through which you, uh, you know, uh, give infrastructure or uh, you know uh, manage infrastructure on the cloud. So now, uh, uh, after PaaS, we have SaaS, that is software as a service. Uh, you would have used uh, Office 365. Uh, that is a SaaS service. You would have used. Uh, SharePoint uh, on cloud that is SaaS as a service. Well, how it is different from other models is it gives a complete package. You don't have to worry about underlying infrastructure. You don't have to worry about uh, do, uh, doing patching or maintaining those applications. So you would just be using that service as a uh, application as a service. So these are the three basic models. There are other models like uh, DR as a service, disaster recovery as a service, uh, uh, you know, X, DX as a service. There are a lot of other models. There are three prim primary models uh, that are available in the market. So uh, let us go through some uh, history before uh, cloud existed. Uh, if we talk about 90s and early 2000, uh, when there was uh, pr uh, probably no uh, cloud provider in the space. Uh, we, we had traditional data centers. So if I have to start a company, I would uh, go to uh, you know one of the data center owners and uh, you know lease out lease out some space and uh, you know uh, you know take space, uh, procure uh, hardware like servers, racks, do cabling, uh, maintaining the uh, you know uh, uh, people who would be managing it. Uh, you know, complete storage. Everything has to be done, and it it used to take almost like uh, uh, three to six months to manage a small to medium size of environment. So that was the uh, you know situation before cloud existed. Uh, we we started getting uh, cloud vendors in early 2000. After 2003, uh, Rackspace, AWS were uh, one of the few vendors who started at this point of time. So this is a, a you know you know a basic history before the cloud existed. We would be doing hundred feet overview of all the services. When I say hundred feet overview, I will be giving you overview of all the serv services that exist as of today, and we will dig more into other services like IEM st storage, uh, S3 Glacier Cloudfront, Elastic Compute, Route 53, the DNS service, 
and other databases services that are available. Uh, VPC virtual private cloud is uh, the uh, virtual data center on cloud space where you provision all your resources behind uh, VPC then networking we have uh, services like uh, elastic load balancer we have direct connect we have IPsec VPN application services involved a lot of other services like API gateway uh, API gateway cache uh, SNS SQS SES a lot of services and we will also be providing with you with some white papers uh, that are uh, that are very crucial for your uh, learning for AWS certification. One uh, specific white white paper, uh, if I talk about, is a security white paper. Uh, uh, you know that AWS recommends that you should go through before you appear for the exam. So we would be providing you, you with all this material, and also uh, by end of the sessions, once we are done with uh, all the sessions, we would be taking you through exam tips. So I, I would be giving you exam tips on how to manage uh, uh, your time when you're working on the exam, how to make sure that you are able to answer all the questions by end of the exam. So all those things we would be covering uh, during all these sessions. Uh, okay, this is the uh, Gartner uh, report for August 2006. Now if you look at it, AWS is clearly the leader uh, above all, for closely followed by Microsoft. So uh, uh, Gartner uh, clearly uh, tells that AWS is uh, the leader in cloud space if we talk about infrastructure as a service. Okay, now coming to the exam blueprint. Uh, your exam for associate level would be divided into four major domains. The first would be designing highly available cost efficient fault tolerant scalable systems. Now uh, what this says is, uh, you know, uh, it, there would be scenario based questions, there would be pointed questions that would ask you, uh, uh, you know, information around how, how would you uh, define highly available system, cost efficient fault tolerant and scalable system that are able to scale up and down as per the requirement. The second domain is imp implementation and deployment. Uh, this would be around uh, you know different scenarios where uh, it will give you some uh, you know a scenario wherein you would have to decide how you are going to implement. What is the best uh, solution that you would uh, choose to implement a specific uh, kind of uh, infrastructure? Then data security. As I said, that data security is one main thing that AWS concentrates on. Uh, it, th this alone has a specific section uh, into an exam uh, uh, that uh, you know would be coming and at least five to eight questions would be specifically on data security. So it is very important that you go through that white paper apart from uh, other, uh, other materials that I would be covering during the course. Uh, troubleshooting is, uh, you know, they would be give, giving some scenarios, something has broken down and would uh, ask you what is the best fix to get this solution uh, for the specific problem. So these are the major domains and when I say uh, the, these are the major domains it does not mean that they are actually divided into the domain. These are the areas that would be covered for your exam. So there would be a primary 60 questions for exam and you would have around 80 minutes. So uh, you would have to uh, you know make sure that you define your uh, uh, time management in such a way that you are able to answer all your questions. And there's no pass uh, mark criteria given by AWS that if you score 60, 65 or 70 percent you would pass. It depends on uh, how you are answering the question, how many students are appearing on that specific day. So I've seen people uh, passing with 60 percent and failing with 65 percent. So it all depends, uh, you know, on the, the day you are appearing for the exam, how many people are, are appearing for the exam on the same day, uh, and how you are answering your questions. So there, there are a lot of parameters on which it would depend on. So uh, just to be make sure, uh, to be sure that you pass pass the exam, uh, it is recommended that you at least score seventy percent marks to make sure that you pass this exam. So uh, uh, I would be uh, sending out the uh, blueprint to uh, Shiva. He will be forwarding it to you guys so that you can go through as to what 
the ask is from AWS what are the different parameters you would be get, uh, judged on. Alright, so this is uh, it for today and tomorrow we'll, uh, I'll take you through the journey of uh, uh, how AWS started, what are different services, I'll take, uh, give you the overview and we'll take it from there. Right. So any questions for whatever we cover today? Uh, sorry, what's your name? Yes, Srikant. Srikant, yeah, Srikant. So, yeah, certification you said, right? Uh, can you uh, do certification directly to sub submit without uh, associate or is there any hierarchy is there? Like, first we need to do... No, no, uh, you, you, can go, uh, you can take up any associate level exam. But what I would recommend is since uh, SysOps uh, concentrates more on troubleshooting and managing the environment, for that you need to know what services are available in AWS, how they are working, what is the functionality of the, that services that is covered in uh, associate uh, the course that we are doing, that is a solution architect associate level. So, uh, you know, the proper, if you uh, take the proper channel to go to SysOps would be uh, first complete. Uh, solution architect associate level and then go in for SysOps because SysOps does not give you any insight into what are the services, what is the functionality of the services and what how they are uh, you know, getting integrated at the background. SysOps would be more on uh, managing and troubleshooting part. But if you want, you can take up any any associate level exam. That is not a foundation uh, that you have to go first with a solution architect associate or SysOps first. It is entirely up to you, but uh, just for under your understanding, SysOps does not cover anything on the services or the uh, you know services offered by AWS, how they're getting integrated uh, in the background, and what is the functionality of each and every service. So for that, for that thing, we need to learn all services, uh, which Amazon is providing us. Yeah, I mean, when you see uh, on SysOps, when you're troubleshooting anything, you need to know how it is uh, in, uh, working in the background, right? If you don't know how the uh, S3 is getting in integrated with the auto scaling, or uh, you know, C2 is getting integrated with auto scaling, how CloudWatch is integrated, how SNS is integrated, you would not be able to troubleshoot it, right? Okay. Any other questions? Is uh, AWS service pro like uh, it's supporting uh, all domains like the banking and uh, healthcare? Like, so yes, if you go to AWS website and uh, go to the solutions tab, uh, we have almost every kind of uh, industry that is supported by AWS be it finance, be it healthcare, be it uh, IT, be it anything. You go to the solutions tab, you would find a lot of solutions uh, pertaining to a lot of industries. And this is the biggest cloud provider in, in, on the planet and you would find each and every kind of uh, industry that is present on AWS. Okay. And one more question, how can you believe like AWS has more secure compared to other cloud services? Okay, I'll be taking you through this journey of how, uh, how security works on AWS, right? So uh, AWS works on the shared security model, wherein some part is uh, done by AWS, some part has to be done by the client. So how AWS is securing your environment and what we need to do to secure our environment, what tools AWS is giving us to make the environment secure, I'll be taking you through that journey. And if you look at the Gartner report, as I mentioned earlier, uh, AWS is the safest cloud space in the on the planet that provides maximum security to your data. So, any other questions that uh, we have for today? Yeah, actually, I'm looking for this admin. Actually, currently my project is going to move to cloud. So, uh -huh. so for that, uh, actually looking for this admin. So. In CSAP, how many services need to learn? Like uh, in specific, like VPC, EC2, some is there are so many services in that uh, in the console. Uh, I mean, what are the like how many services need to cover for CSAP? Like 
Amanul, uh, I didn't get the question correctly. Uh, you are asking how, uh, if you do sysops, how many services you will be working on? Yeah. Yes, yes. You see, it depends on what your environment is. Uh, what services are being utilized by your environment? It could be you are utilizing uh, uh, EC2, you are utilizing Lambda, you are utilizing uh, S3, Database, RDS, DynamoDB, Redshift. It depends on what services are being utilized in, uh, for your client. Depending on that, you would have to troubleshoot. So we can we can do the sysops uh, course as well. So, uh, so I'm certified on uh, AWS Solution Architect uh, Associate. I'm certified uh, sysops guy. I'm, I'm also certified recently on the AWS Solution Architect Professional as well. So if you want to uh, go ahead with the sysops first, uh, we can do that as well. Not a problem. And uh, can you cover all uh, CLA part also? Command line interface. On this. Yes, we we have uh, we have command line interface uh, on this. So if you are comfortable with command line interface, we can uh, we have a tool uh, from AWS called AWS Command Line that you can download, and that would give give you ability to run AWS commands on your uh, you know desktop or laptop, and then uh, configure your AWS environment from your uh, your machine locally. Okay. And actually, I'm looking for the migration services. So, can you cover like uh, real use cases? Yes, I would be in sysops. Uh, we uh, we have migra uh, migration. So, we, uh, I would be covering the migration services. What tools are available? I'll give you some use cases that I've been working for a lot of clients. I do a lot of freelancing for various clients. I can give you a lot of uh, insight into what are the practical practicalities that uh, we have to take care. What what are the steps? involved uh, doing a migration of uh, different kind of infrastructure that that will uh, I'll be covering once the source code. Is it possible to share sir, how many services are going to cover like how many services are going to teach in our course? Yeah, I'll be uh, I'll I'll be giving the overview of each and every service. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, there, there are a lot of services, let's say for, uh, code deploy, code commit, these are more towards DevOps. We won't be covering those kinds of services. Anything that is pertaining more to infrastructure, we would be digging in more into those services, and we we have labs for all the services. No, I mean, uh, can you share uh, course content like how many services will go like a uh, I mean, so like database? Uh, yeah. I'm covering all the services. Any service that is available on AWS. I would be covering all the services. It is just in database. In database, uh, how many like RDS some services you yeah, We are covering RDS, DynamoDB, Redshift, everything we are covering. Don't worry about that. Plastic cache, everything will be covered. Okay. Any other questions for today? Okay, so no questions. Uh, 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 so we'll wind up the class for today, and uh, tomorrow we'll uh, catch up uh, at uh, at the same time. Uh, Shiva would uh, be uh, the uh, spark for us, a single point of contact, uh, and any changes uh, to the timeline, anything uh, we we need to inform Shiva, and uh, he would coordinate between all of us. So we'll catch up tomorrow at the same time. Thank you, guys, uh, and we have a nice day. Thank you. Are you sure? Second view.